Hello everyone, Mr. Clark here again. And this time we're going to talk about solving one-step equations. Please remember that as you watch, you can pause the video if you get confused, if I'm going too fast. If you need to go back over something, this is your advantage of doing things online and watching the lecture on video. If you get confused, just move it back, watch it again. Okay, so today we're talking about solving one-step equations. We've already been over this a little bit. I guess one word that you need to know is what an equation is. Okay, an equation is any math expression that has an equal sign. It's pretty simple, right? Everybody knows what equal is. It's no big deal. No, this is an extremely big deal. Equality in equations may be the most important concept in all of mathematics. It's what math is built on. This is equal to that. These are the same things. Once we know two things are the same, that they're actually equal, <laughs> we've figured out something. Something big that we can work with a lot. Okay? We've got a bunch of properties that we've discovered about equality. Remember all those things, the property of the subtraction, addition, multiplication properties of equality, distribution properties of equality, all interesting things we know about things that are equal. Okay. All right, well, here we go. Let's, we can look at equations and we can solve for variables. To solve for a variable in an equation, we want to get the variable alone on one side of the equation with a number on the other side like this. The variable's alone on one side of the equation. And then there's a number on the other side that tells us that x equals 2. Here's a number on one side and a variable on the other side of the equation. This looks like the answer to, the, to a question, right? If I ask you, what is x? Well, x equals 2. That's the answer. So if you can get it to look like this, you found the answer with a, a variable on one side of the equation and a number on the other. Okay. Then we use the properties of the numbers like addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division properties of equality, and the distribution properties. Okay? The first four, the addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division properties of equality, all just say the same thing. If I want to, if I have an equation and I want it to stay true, I gotta always do the same thing to both sides of the equation. So if I have x equals 2, I can add two or any number to both sides. Here I'm adding 3. I can add any number to both sides. As long as I add the same thing to both sides, that thing stays true. Same with multiplication. If I have y equals 6 and I multiply both sides by 4, this stays equal. Stays equal. We want to make sure that that equal sign stays true. Alright, so to solve for a variable x, let's say I have this, x plus 7 equals 15. Well, I want to get that x by itself on one side of the equal sign. How am I going to do that? Well, this is a plus 7 here. What can I do to get rid of plus 7? What's the opposite of plus 7? Okay, x is added to 7, we've got to get rid of the 7, alright, and then the variable will be on one side of the equal side by itself, and that's what we're looking for. So to get rid of the 7, it's added to x, we want to do the inverse operation, remember inverse operations? The opposite of addition, the inverse operation for addition is subtraction, so we subtract 7 to get rid of that 7. According to the subtraction property of equality, if I subtract 7 from one side, I have to subtract it from the other side as well. So here we go. I'm going to 
subtract 7 from this side, I have to subtract 7 from that side as well. Since 7 minus 7 equals 0, they're additive inverses of each other. Right? If I add them together, I get 0, the additive identity. right? And since x plus 0, the additive identity, x plus 0 just is x, this turns into 0, which then x plus 0 is x. And I wind up with just x on this side. 15 minus 7 is 8. Right? So the answer to this, x equals 8. And we've solved, we now know what x equals. It equals 8 because we got x on one side by itself and 8 by itself on the other side. Now let's take this result and go back to the original equation. Anywhere that I see x, since it's equal to 8, I can substitute in an 8, because I know x equals 8. 8 plus 7 equals 15. It's true. This equation, equal sign, is still true. Because we didn't do anything to one side that we didn't do to the other, it stayed equal. The answer is 8. X equals 8. So let's solve for a variable. 4x equals 16. Well, my, what is my variable in this one? It's x, right? I'm going to get x by itself. But it's multiplied by 4. This is 4 times x. How do I get rid of something that's multiplied? What's the inverse operation of multiplication? It is division. x is multiplied. We are going to do division. x is multiplied by 4. How do we get rid of the 4? Since it's multiplied, the inverse operation of multiplication is division. So we divide by 4. According to the division property of equality, if I divide one side of the equation by 4, I must divide the other side by 4 as well. So I take my 4x, divide it by 4, I have to do the same thing to the other side of the equation. So 4x divided by 4 equals 16 divided by 4. Since 4 over 4 equals 1, and 1 times x equals x, notice, now we have 1 over here. These are the, this is the multiplication identity, right? 1 is the multiplication identity element. So this, what basically happens is these 4's go away. 4 over 4, by, they disappear. And we get x equals 16 divided by 4. 16 div the, divided by 4 is 4. So x equals 4, we have an answer. x equals 4. What is x? x equals 4. Here's some examples. Let's try some of these. x plus 7 equals 9. I want to get rid of this 7, then x will be by itself. How do I get rid of plus 7? Minus 7. If I'm going to do it to this side of the equation, I have to do it to that side of the equation as well. Plus 7 minus 7, those go away. I'm just left with x. 9 minus 7 equals 2. Again, if I'm going too fast, back up and watch it again, please. 3x equals 12. Got to get rid of this 3. How do we get rid of the 3? This is 3 times x. We'll divide by 3. 3 over 3 is 1. Those are going away. Well, if I'm going to divide one side by 3, I have to divide the other side by 3. 3 over 3, those go away. I'm left with just x over here. 12 divided by 3 is 4. 
x minus 4 equals 2. This is minus 4. This is subtraction. What's the inverse operation of subtraction? Addition. I need to add 4 plus 4. I'm going to do it on this side. What do I have to do on this side? Same thing. Minus 4 plus 4. Let's go away. Bye. I'm left with nothing but x equals 2 plus 4 is 6. Is this true? Let's substitute the 6 back in for the x. 6 minus 4 equals 2. Yep, it works. Here we have a division problem. x divided by 2. Oh, I get rid of this divided by 2. What's the opposite of divided by 2? Multiply by 2. I'm going to multiply this side by 2. If I'm going to multiply this side by 2, what do I have to do to that side? These two cancel each other out. 2 divided by 2 is just 1 times x. That's x. And then 4 times 2 is 8. One last one. 4 equals x plus 6. doesn't matter that the x is on the right side of the equation or the left side because remember we've got the reflexive property where we can just flip those over, flip those around. Got to get x by itself, but it's added to 6. How do we get rid of plus 6? Minus 6. If I'm going to do that to one side of the equation, I have to do it to the other. These go away. I'm left with just x over here. 4 minus 6. 4 minus 6 is actually negative 2. So x equals negative 2. By the reflexive property, we can just put those in x equals minus 2. Let's give some of those problems a try. Hopefully this is all reviewed for you and you haven't forgotten it from Algebra 1. But if you have and you need extra help, please let me know and I'll be there to help you. Thank you.